But aye, oh, definitely, definitely wintry. So let's crack on. We're getting up into like a, a more denser part of the woods, so hopefully we'll get a bit of shelter there, but definitely a bit daft just now. I've got to kind of make my way across this dike here with a muddy bit at the other one side and a, and a crazy fall at the other. But, uh, I'll put you down the new and hopefully when I get up there there'll be a nice sheltered bit away from this wind and away from this uh, snow that's getting horizontal. It's going to be nice fluffy snow that falls straight down but that's not happening. So I don't know what kind of pictures I'm going to get today, I don't know if I'm going to get any but it'll be exciting and it'll take you so long for the adventure. Aye, these are nice and cosy in your house. I'm freezing my bars off here. <laughs> depth of field means that it gives you a contrast in your photo from focused to unfocused so to get a lesser depth of field there'll be just a small area in your photograph that's focused and a larger depth of field means that there's a larger area that's focused and it really is just as simple as that once you get your head around the, um, the settings on your aperture then it's just a piece of cake so we'll go crack on and we'll find an example but I'll get the camera out and we'll get the settings looked at but that's in, sense, in a sense that's what it is shallow depth of field means there's not much in focus on your image and larger depth of field means there's a larger area that is uh, in focus and we'll look into the settings as we climb up this hill Come on. Oh look, a leaf on a stick. That's a bonny, that's a bonny leaf on a stick, isn't it? That might be handy. I could maybe just uh, keep it around here, around my my mouth area just to keep my mouth warm you know to keep uh aye to keep my to keep my lips dry you can aye bonny leaf i think it's an oak leaf but aye definitely handy definitely handy to hide this cold so I, i'm annoyed with it so you guys must be annoyed with it well, looking at my face on here speaking about apertures when i've got that hang hanging about <laughs> oh dear it wouldn't be so bad if it was like skin colored so you couldn't see it. But with the white snow, the black background, my white face kind of stands out quite, uh, quite well with this big red cherry on the lip. <laughs> A wee bit of a disaster. I don't know how. It's half, well, more than half the party when I left. But, um, way up a hill in these conditions, with no floor, I might have to start. Alright guys, welcome back to a snowy Fotheringham Hill again for the second day on the trot. First day was a total disaster, my phone battery died so I got up to the top of the hill. Weather was alright, wee bit of windy maybe, I'll let you see that in some of the clips but the battery of my phone died, my one port of call for safety died so made the decision just to cancel the shoot, come out again the next day and um, try again. So as you can see we've got the wintery conditions, the snowflakes are changing from these little polystyrene ball style to big fluffy flakes. Usually this comes first and then the fluffy flakes come after. So what we're going to do is start going through the aperture things that I started yesterday, maybe kind of finish that off. 
loving the conditions hopefully get some decent images and remember and subscribe if you can if you've not already hit the subscribe button which is down at the bottom corner there down this side just tap that and that's you done hit the like button leave a comment and um because i i love doing these videos i love getting out and about and uh because i'm staying local i'm not far from my house at all it's fovering ham hill really does have heaps of treats for me just to take photos of heaps of photo photo opportunities up here there's that much going on on this hill there's a bonny tower away to start but we're not going to make it up that far but hit the subscribe button hit the like button share it with your friends it really does help my subscribers are going up I'd like to say a hello to all my new subscribers from the last video and then um, hopefully keep this momentum going because it's slowly building up that's the plan i'm trying hard so stick with me hit the subscribe button hit the like button we're going to go further into this woods a bit and try and get some good depth of field photos because that's what it's all about that that special trick that you can do with your camera that a lot of folk don't know about that are maybe amateur photographers and it really does just make your image pop and when you do get the hang of it and when you do get used to it it's a simple thing and it just transforms your photography altogether so let's crack on will we right so i have found this strange tree stump looks like a hand it's like a hand climbing out of the ground and that's kind of that's the kind of image i got in my head it's like it's like it's reaching up and i think it's going to be a really good composition for showing off the depth of field that we've been talking about so i think we'll set up set up here and see what we can get now the camera i'm using is a canon eos m50 camera that's my camera of choice that's what i use all the time and it really is a it really is a good camera it's good quality images so I've got my 15 to 45 millimeter lens on and now I'm going to shoot to see if I can capture this kind of hand coming out of the ground but capture it with the depth of field that it deserves to make it more pronounced from the background if you know what I mean to make it the feature that it should be So I'm on my aperture priority mode, which is the AV setting on my Canon camera. It will be an A setting on, it, on the other cameras, but Canon seems to have an AV. I'm going to drop my aperture to the lowest I can get to start off with, which is F rating 4. And remember, if you put a ruler out in front of you from 4 to 30, say roughly, the smaller the aperture number, the smaller the depth of field so that's what you're looking for so you can move focus on the hand like tree stump coming out and it's once i've got it focused because it's the smallest part of the f rating because it's a lower depth of field it's only going to be that small area that's in focus i'm going to keep it off center it's like a hand grabbing out the ground but because it's so light and there's a sky and everything at the right hand side I'm having that hand coming out the ground on my right hand side of the picture so I've got more of a dark background to try and get it try and get the desired effect I want because I don't want to be burnt out from the sky over there
these kind of things brilliant for getting your depth of field images brilliant for that blurred background because there's so much detail I can't wait to show you the actual detail of this because it's just out of this world it's it's like a wee world inside a log and it's just the effect that it's given looks like Looks like a wee island stuck in the middle of that tree trunk. It is, it's just, it's just bonny. You know what I mean? Everything, everything here with this dusting of snow, it's just bonny. I could probably sit here for a while. Oh. I could probably sit here for a while and just enjoy the scenery. Just from this little bit, I'll let you see 360. Looks a bit cluttered with trees when you turn the camera around. But you could sit here on this wee stump. It's kind of like a wee seat. I could maybe park my ears a bit there. Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to sit. Oh, aye. It's like a throne. Give my feet up. Oh. If I can get my feet up, foot slider off. Oh, aye. Let me see what's going on. What compositions can I get from here? <laughs> oh, my welly boots in the background. <laughs> what am I like? Wonder if I can sit you guys there. I could sit and take pictures here. That's really quite cosy. It's quite warm. Oh, it's clothes on. Kind of helps. There's some bonny trees there. Should have brought some to eat. Getting quite comfy actually. Found this another amazing shot here. There's a V shape in the tree, and there's a there's obviously been a puddle of water in the inside, and it's frozen over, and it's just caught in little crystals. And I think if I shoot it from the other side through, I'm going to get a good depth of field on that image, and it's really going to kick it off. And it's just a simple, as you can see, it's just a simple area, V shaped tree. We'll have a look around the other side of it. Now that's the kind of, that's what I'm going to go and take a photo through here. Shooting through there, I'm going to be right close from my camera down here. I'm going to be on a low aperture between f4 and f9. And hopefully the background will be blurred and maybe a wee bit of blur on this ridge at the back. That's what I'm going to try. I'm going to take a photo of it. And if I can set you up somewhere, looking at me, I wonder if I can set you up here. Oh, I got you. Well, I think I do, this could be good. So, since you're way up there, and I'm way down here, I'm going to shoot through and see what we can get. So it's one hundred of a second. One hundred of a second, f point three. If you can see me, one hundred of a second, f point three, which gives me that just that slightly small area in focus because we're lower on the aperture rating. In the middle, blurred in the background, blurred in the front go in the foreground, and I'll quite, I quite like that. Might put the exposure down a wee bit. Still f.3 and it's hitting, because I've lowered the exposure, the shutter speed's changed to 160 for a second. And it looks like a wee world, I've got all these little bits of snow falling in. Oh, I love it. That was handy.
That was a good, a good wee bit of, of photography there. Oh, if I can sort you guys out in here. Do, 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 do. Right, time to go home. I've got everything. Where's my? Oh yeah, near ease, near ease. Just about left the tripod. There it is, sitting there. I think that should be a decent photo of that and it. Just another example of what you can do with your aperture setting and your F ratings. So yesterday, yesterday was an experience. Definitely. Just shows you how, what kind of safety net technology kind of gives us these days. I mean, if that was 20 years ago and I was up there taking photos, I wouldn't have had a phone. But the first thing I kind of thought I was, I'm up a hill, it's snowing, it's cold, it's windy. And, um, I've got no way of contacting anybody if I hurt myself or slip, especially in these conditions. And uh, just shows you eh, the change, but technology changes for the good, I suppose. <laughs> We've been quite happy up there taking photos, but I've no way of getting in contact with anybody. I mean, don't get me wrong, I tell folk where I'm going. I always tell somebody where I'm going to take photos, so they know I'm not back. I have enough idea of where I am. But, eh, uh, the elements got me yesterday. It was fun, didn't get me wrong, battling through the elements, battling through the wind, battling through the snow, slipping and sliding, climbing over walls. It's all part of the adventure, it's all part of the experience. And, eh, uh, uh, it's good fun. And I like taking you guys along with me. Even though it may seem like I'm walking through the woods, sliding about and taking photos and speaking to myself, from my perspective, it's, eh, uh, <laughs> hopefully you are enjoying it and, the, the comfort of your home and um, right, I packed my camera away. I don't want to be taking any of the photos because I'm not far away from the car at all. But then you come across bits like this: two fallen trees and a stump sticking out the ground. I mean, it's just a simple thing. You can see in the top there are all these different kinds of oh. Do I do I stop and take photos of this? No. I'm gonna head home. I'll leave that stump for the spring. <laughs> I think. Definitely. There's bits falling everywhere, look. There's another stump. But yeah. Time to go home. My fingers are nipping. I've not invested in a pair of the fingerless gloves yet. I'm going to have to get a pair. By the time I get a pair, it'll be summertime probably, but I might go and look at that today. See if I can find them. Photography gloves. But something's telling me to go back there. You can see it behind me. Do I go back or do I just. No, I'm just getting him. I'm getting him. Camera's in the bag. It's not coming out again. For it's... Once it's away, it's away. <laughs> oh. I mean, this, this hill, there's, there's everything in this hill. From the start, there's a wee river. And that kicks you off. You wander up through all these different kinds of woodland kind of environment areas. You get to the top and the ruins and... Oh, it's just heaps of stuff. Fotheringham Hill, Angus. Go for a walk there. Just the other side of Lure, Forfer. And you're into walking. It's beautiful, it's bonny. There's different environments every two minutes there's features and stone built features and just a really bonny place to go so aye get your get your hiking boots on never know i might see you up there one day